Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Quant Network, aka Q&T. So let's just dive in and let's start off with this tweet here. So uh, one of the biggest things that I've addressed on this channel is Q&T being bigger than Bitcoin. Uh, in this video, we are going to break down why I believe this is the case. I have very similar videos like this that I've done um, in the past as well. Uh, but I think that as we have seen a lot of things kind of mature from quant side, especially in terms of partnerships and those partnerships obviously having a lot of reports coming out on how uh, large their digital uh, percentage around finances as well as money supply and money movements have changed. I think that the best time to make this video is right now, especially as we are awaiting um, a huge fire sale in the market yet again. Yes, for those that are not aware, um, I do believe that we will see a lot lower price action in this market, and I have addressed that many times before. I do think that at some point in time, Q&T could trade or be trading at somewhere between fifty to eighty dollars. Now. Am, we, am I going to wait for those prices to be realized in exactly to go all in? Not necessarily. I will start to average down once we hit $100 and uh, below. But of course, everyone has a different situation. If I do believe that Q&T is going to be bigger than Bitcoin, I also don't feel that bad uh, buying around $100 anyways as well. But nonetheless, before we get too off topic... Let's jump in and let's talk about this tweet from just a tech guy over on Twitter. So we do see only 14.6 million QNT exist. The biggest argument around Bitcoin has always been, you know, scarcity. Um, oh, it's so scarce. It's it's this, it's that. You know, only a, a, this percentage of the world population can own one Bitcoin. In fact, we even do see from BitGet going back to 2021, December 5th. You know, that's what a limited supply provides. Scarcity. No more than 21 million Bitcoin will ever exist. We made an image to show how this number relates to the world population. And uh, here you guys have it. So obviously with 21 million supply of Bitcoin out there, you'd argue that yes, it is a very scarce token. But with QNC, there's only 14.6 million. Now, what is the big difference here? Well, obviously with Bitcoin compared to QNT, there's a huge, huge difference. Utility. Utility and the individuals that will utilize QNT are completely different than Bitcoin. Now, I'm not going to take anything away from Bitcoin. I think that Bitcoin has done a very, very good job on paving the way for tokens like QNT to actually be realized in, developed, and also designed. But when we look at things happening here, we do see, and they will be needed by the second largest, biggest software companies in the world, Europe's payment infrastructure leader, Latin America, the Swiss Stock Exchange, Swiss Central Bank, Bank of England, Finality, IMF, KPMG, PwC, Deloitte, UST, and many, many more. Don't forget that most of these tokens will be staked on community gateways for securing the network through game theory. The staked amount will also dictate how much transactions your gateway may process and therefore your revenue. And yes... This is going to be a possibility in the future. Imagine the network effects of 14.6 million tokens um, having not only retail stake in those tokens, but having these massive entities utilizing the token uh, to move money, facilitate money, and also ultimately to utilize DLT technology because that's what everyone discusses, right? The future of crypto, um, how these companies will utilize you know, DLT technology and crypto itself. Well, you don't get mass adoption without having that bridge between, of course, the legacy system and DLT. And guess who's solving that? That's right, Quant with Overledger, powered by QNT. Now, also, uh, we have been seeing a ton of accumulation of QNT. In fact, we did see over here uh, from Crypto uh, Crixus over on Twitter, 98,000 QNT holders, 100,000 until the end of the week. And uh, I do think that we are still very early on QNT. 100,000 holders is really nothing. Uh, we talk about uh, this a lot with uh, Casper because Casper is nearing the 100,000 uh, mark as well. Um, these tokens, what they do, do provide utility-wise and uh, how large they could be in the future, really isn't dictated on how many individuals out there are holding. But I will say this, what does dictate the holding amount is how early we are. Uh, Bitcoin sitting at, I think, like 44 million, 43 million total addresses. Yeah, we're at 98,000. That is nothing. It is a droplet of water in the world of crypto. It is a droplet of, of water in the world of finance, payments, and of course, going into global numbers around the population, this is nothing. Yes, we are extremely early. 
most people don't really realize what quant is actually doing. In fact, not a lot of individuals even realize what uh, interoperability even means. That's why like 99% don't even see this. In fact, we'll probably put that in the thumbnail. 99% of people don't even realize what is happening around QNT because they don't. In fact, every single time that I've talked about QNT, not a lot of people understand the technology behind this. That's why it's very interesting to see companies like Nexi working with Quant. In fact, I just recently broke down uh, Nexi and their move towards digitization just recently. This is the number one merchant acquirer by number of merchants and transaction value. They are becoming the number one source for finance in the European area. They are a huge, huge company. 2.2 million merchants, number one card process, processor of a uh, number of cards and transaction volume, and over 170 million cards. They're huge. And uh, of course, they are focused on digital payments and digitization around payments and finance. And uh, you could read a lot more about them if you did want to. I've broken them down so many times on this channel, so I know that you guys are probably annoyed by it. Uh, but I just want to talk to you guys real quick about their quarter three earnings. Shout out to Greg Lunt, 27 over on uh, Twitter. But we do see double-digit percentage year-over-year -year growth. Uh, we also see EBITDA earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization increased about 16.5% from 9 million 2021 to 9 million 2022. Uh, so great to see. Now, with this in mind, I also want you guys to understand that they have been moving towards digital currencies and digitization for a little bit of time. Uh, we just recently talked about their push behind digitization as well within the financial sector. Now, what's very interesting about this is also the numbers behind, uh, you know, Nexi. It's a very substantial company, like I said, um, but they have over 1,000 financial institutions connected with over 20 plus central banks. You know, when we look at DLT interoperability, this is what we want to see. This is the holy grail of it all, because at the end of the day, when we look at what Quant has solved, this will domino effect into tens of thousands of financial institutions and massive amounts of central banks um, that will be able to connect and plug and play into the DLT space. This is a huge opportunity for something like Quant. And we also do see down here, the new white paper discusses Nexi's involvement in the development of the digital euro with the European Central Bank as well. Which, by the way, yes, the digital euro is on its way, the digital pound is on its way, and Quant is a big uh, tech provider within this, as well as Ripple, uh, some of the largest names in this space. And uh, we do see they also mention they're in discussions with other central banks and monetary authorities to support additional CBDCs. Furthermore, Nexi has developed their own DLT based application framework for issuing and managing digital tokens. This allows any company to harness the power of digital assets and it needs interoperability, QNT. We love the Finality shout out as well. And here you guys have from Finality eMoney Tokens, Finality International, um, a consortium of 15 international banks enables tokenized on-chain payment. Nexi has developed a DLT-based application framework for issuing and managing digital tokens. And then as we do see more um, updates from Nexi, one, continues to expand its dominance in European digital payments alongside central banks, enterprises, and merchants, QNT will be there to add utility and capture the value. We have just begun. And yes, this is why I do think that when we go forward on in time, the network effects will be substantially different than Bitcoin. And again, when we look at the price of Bitcoin, here you guys have a little bit of a chart. Now, this is going all the way back to May. We don't have more price data on this on this chart. Obviously, you guys can paint the picture as we are sitting at about like 16.8K right now. Um, but here you guys have the price history of Bitcoin going all the way back to 2010. Yeah, nine cents. Then all of a sudden, boom. We were all the way at $13.28 um, in, this is like 2013, and then all of a sudden $123 in October, followed by a huge spike in 2013-2014 to about $687.50. Well, it spiked to $1,238, but then it fell to $687.50. And then it kind of slumped a little bit. Then we hit $315, $900, and then all of a sudden $2,000 in May, and then almost $20,000 in December of 2017, 2018. And this is like the big picture that I want you guys to you really kind of see here because as we seen um, Q&T peak at about $400, I would argue that we're probably back in this point here of like 2013 
or, or I should say 2012 um, of uh, Bitcoin. I think that this might have been wrong. I think that this is like 2013, 2014, but they have 2012 uh, mentioned twice here. But this is like 2013, almost 20. Um, it's like in between 2012 and 2013. I think that we're right here which means that the growth of Q&T is substantially different than Bitcoin. And yeah, sure, it might take us another, we'll say, seven years to be fully realized in, but it could happen a lot sooner. And, you know, $20,000 was achieved from 2012 to about 2019, so seven years, a seven-year difference is not that substantial for making generational wealth. And again, all of this is going to be heightened by these major partnerships. Again, all of these major partnerships like LAC Chain, Oracle, Nexi, even UST, Nexi, and Oracle, which I know that we kind of mentioned Nexi and Oracle up here already. Um, these are different areas of focus. This is a platform provider, distribution partner, and then marketplace. And Oracle is on the forefront of all of these areas because they do see the value behind Quan's products and networks, but they also want to tap into the future, which is DLT. And you can see all of that here um, when we look at the future around uh, Quant. I mean, they are focused on the next big thing. This is the next big thing. This is the biggest thing, in fact, to focus on because this is going to be the future of a lot of these major industries and sectors. Finance itself will be fully disrupted by crypto and Q&T. Q&T, the best way that I could describe this is, say for so you're holding XRP, XLM, HBAR, Algorand, any single token in the space and that project will say we'll, we'll say ripple right now with what ripple is doing they don't demand to utilize QT, but overledger does have the opportunity to utilize the xrp ledger um, on their platform what i want to give you guys a quick insight on is that any project that you are holding token wise and it's a dlt the mass adoption area to focus on is how to easily implement DLT into everyday processes. Having that connection layer, that, that connector in between that, which is what Quant developed with Overledger, it's seamless interoperability, that's a huge game changer. And you could tap into the power and the potential behind any major network. And this is why it is so big in terms of the opportunity that Quant has, because this is going to connect to private and even public networks. This is built for everything. You can see this through their ecosystem. I've, I, I've broken this down so many times in the past, or, or sorry, it wasn't the e ecosystem. It was um, in, in the What tab. I, I think it was in the What tab. Uh, it might have been in their, um, I, I believe it was maybe in the Products tab. But nonetheless, yeah, it was the product tab. So here is what I wanted to talk to you guys about uh, real quick. I already talked about this in the past, but um, everything from the quant solution tab to the third party solutions tab, all through the Overledger APIs will connect to the DLTs that we focus on on an everyday basis. This will power mass adoption of all of crypto. Meaning, with what Bitcoin has done, again, I never take what Bitcoin has done for granted. Bitcoin has paved the way for all of these major projects in the space to be realized in and the power and the potential behind DLT to truly be shined the greatest. Um, I believe that Quant will take the wheel next. Quant is going to allow for the next stage of mass adoption, the next billion users to be realized in by having these giant corporations, these you know, financial institutions, these companies as well, to tap into the power of DLT and have DLT at the core of their systems, empowering Web3 and the future of DeFi and crypto itself to be realized. In, and this is going to be a massive opportunity that will allow for Q&T to shine even greater than what Bitcoin has done in the past. The technological advancement of what Quant has solved with interoperability, seamless interoperability through three lines of code is something that could not be rivaled by, we'll say, Bitcoin. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and turn the free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day, beautiful night. If you guys are on this beautiful world, it's been Nick. Peace out, guys.